When all hope seemed lost for a dying teenager, Padre Pio's intercession brought about a miraculous healing. Stay tuned to hear this story of perseverance, faith, and miracles. Welcome back to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio. If you're new to our channel, Padre Pio was a Capuchin friar, mystic, and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos and shorts five days a week, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint, and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member, or a friend. And now to our story. Today's story is sourced from the book. Padre Pio, Story of a Victim, by Francobaldo Chiocci. Within its pages, we encounter a remarkable story about the miraculous healing of Lucia Bellodi from the village of Alalta in northern Italy. As you will soon hear, Lucia faced numerous illnesses, and it seemed her life was on the verge of ending. However, little did anyone know her life would take an unexpected turn for the better. Listen to this. In 1945, during her teenage years, Lucia was diagnosed with a severe case of diabetes insipidus, a rare condition that causes an unappeasable thirst. This already challenging situation was further complicated by inflammation of the brain tissues. Poor Lucia underwent treatment in various hospitals in northern Italy. The doctors did everything they could, but instead of improving, she only got worse. Due to a disorder disrupting the proper production of hormones, Lucia was declared incurable. She was then admitted to a nursing home in Modena, a city in northern Italy. In the nursing home, the religious sisters did everything they could to alleviate Lucia's suffering. And this was no easy task at all. You see, Lucia's body was unable to process water properly, and as a result, she needed to drink constantly. We're talking here about approximately 100 liters or 26 and a half gallons of water per day. It may seem unbelievable, but even Lucia herself claimed that in the last days before the cure, she drank more than 160 liters in 24 hours. Because of all that drinking, Lucia's belly was always swollen and disfigured. Now, you might be wondering, how did Lucia drink all that water? Well, she used a hose that was connected to a large container. And even at night, while sleeping, she needed to drink water through that hose because if she stopped drinking, her tongue would swell and her mouth would start bleeding. Furthermore, due to urinary complications, the bed sheets had to be changed several times a day. Additionally, there was another serious problem. Approximately every two weeks, Lucia endured terrible headaches and high fevers, sometimes reaching the point of delirium. Nevertheless, despite these challenges, Lucia remained steadfast in her faith. Occasionally, she heard stories about Padre Pio from the religious sisters, and she herself often prayed to him. Interestingly, Lucia never prayed for her own healing. Instead, she prayed for the strength to carry her cross, or for the release from this life. This is an important point, especially for us today. Saint Therese of Lysia followed this maxim. If God wants it, I want it. This is easier said than done, but represents an apex of perfection towards which we should strive. On the feast day of Corpus Christi in 1952, Lucia expressed her desire to attend Mass. The sisters agreed, but upon her return from confession, Lucia found herself unable to stand on her feet. She was quickly brought back to bed enduring a persistent fever and headache throughout the morning. However, amid this challenging time, something extraordinary unfolded. She saw a friar in the room who was looking at her with his dark eyes, as if he was scolding her. At one point, one of the sisters heard Lucia say, 
Padre Pio, I can't go on anymore. Please take me. Seeing how much Lucia was suffering, the sister also prayed for God to free her from this miserable existence. Around two in the afternoon, Lucia's body began to feel cold, leading the sisters to believe that her life was nearing its end. It was at this moment that Lucia perceived the sweet fragrance of violets in the room. Enjoying the beautiful fragrance, she fell into a deep sleep. In the midst of her slumber, a voice spoke to her, saying, Rise, Lucia, you are healed. This evening or tomorrow, come to see me in San Giovanni Rotondo. During her sleep, Lucia's mouth remained firmly closed, making it impossible for the sisters to insert the water hose. Fearing that her tongue might swell, leading to a hemorrhage, the sisters hesitated for an hour and a half before deciding to wake her by slapping her. Lucia suddenly woke up and to their astonishment got out of bed, proclaiming that she had been healed. As you can imagine, the sisters thought she was delirious. However, when she explained that it was Padre Pio who healed her, they took her to the chapel to thank the Lord. Lucia climbed the stairs alone, feeling confident, and even participated in the Corpus Christi procession. She felt completely well, as if she had never suffered anything in the last seven years. Lucia expressed her desire to travel to San Giovanni Rotondo but the sisters feared she might not be ready for such a long journey, as the distance was 590 kilometers, or 370 miles, one way. So they forced her to stay three more days in the nursing home. A few days later, accompanied by two religious sisters, Lucia joyfully arrived in San Giovanni Rotondo. Upon meeting Padre Pio, he smiled and said, I was waiting for you. Lucia expressed her many thanks, but Padre Pio explained that it was the Lord who deserves the thanks, not him. On June 22, ten days after the miraculous healing, a large and memorable celebration was organized in Lucia's hometown of Valalta, still remembered today as the Miracle Festival. And this here is a photograph of the actual event with Lucia in the center. But our story doesn't end just here. Some time after, Lucia underwent various medical examinations, and the doctors confirmed her miraculous recovery. However, they told her she will never be able to conceive. But, trusting in Padre Pio, Lucia decided to marry, and in 1961 she was blessed with a child. End of story. Thank you for listening. Please do like and share this video to help our channel grow. And please give our channel a boost by continuing to watch another video. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. I have recommended some videos especially chosen for you on the end screen. Or just click on one of the links in the description below for a full selection of great Padre Pio stories or our playlist of Padre Pio thoughts for the day. And don't forget to enroll your Mass Intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. You'll find the link in the description below. And stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.